welcome to the latest edition of the Tonk Points Podcast and the final one for this year. Coming to you from the beautiful studios of UniversalExports.co. This week we swing around the country for a few updates and results from some clubs that not previously have been mentioned on our podcast. We check out a pop-up Patonk option. We view a few sunrises. Have a look at logging into the new PFA website. And of course we have Jerry's Corner to consider. So settle in, here we go. First off, it seems that there are some talented photographers amongst us in the Patonk family. I refer to the Facebook postings of beautiful sunrises and sunsets that have been appearing semi-regularly. In particular, I'd like to mention the work of Kerry Madden, Sue Rickaby, and lately from a Tasmanian trip, Raymond Bond. There are a few more, but if you haven't seen them, they are worth checking out. Mount Martha Bowls and Patonk Club have initiated what looks like becoming a very popular innovation. Pop-up Patonk. They promote it as new, exciting and different. Great fun for all ages. Summer family fun, picnic, sausage sizzle with drinks at bar prices. It runs from 5.30 to 7.30 on Friday the 10th of December and Thursday the 30th of December. Then every Friday until February 25. What an excellent way to introduce the game of Patong to the general public. Encourage new membership and have a great social evening at the same time. Other clubs, take note. Now, bits and pieces from around the traps. Great result for Club de Patong to Adelaide at Interclub Round 2 at Gawler on November 28. Well done to Tina, Louise and JP with top spot. The club had three teams in the top eight out of 22 with fantastic efforts from all club players. Thanks to the team and all at Gawler for a great day. Still with CDPDA, they're running their Christmas Cup on December 19. Great wine, food and competition. 9.30 registration with a start time at 10.30. $13 will get you a lunch of seafood, cocktail, roast chicken, ham off the bone... And then assorted desserts. What a deal. Sounds like it's worth going even if you don't play. Now, over in Western Australia, the Dodo Patong Club. Congratulations to Dodo members for winning both in Men and Ladies Best Player of the Year 2021 in Western Australia. And Krishika Ramjutin, 14 years old only, reaching the third position of the ladies. Well done. Player of the Year 2021, Vic Ramjutin. Player of the Year 2021 ladies, Vidya Achamar. Also, congratulations, second men, Nuvish Achamar, ladies, Lynn Chegwidden, and third men, Walter Lebchenko, ladies, Krishika Ramjutin, then the veteran winner in the men was Aiton Wheeland, and ladies, Helen Bayet. At the Patong Club Launceston, Tasmania, the club's first Christmas lunch was held at Steve's Grill on Friday the 26th of November. They look forward to many more Christmas celebrations together in the coming years, especially as membership increases. Good luck, Lorne. And just a little further afield, the World Championships have just concluded in Santa Susana, Spain. These are the first championships in a long time to have the juniors, women's and men's titles held at the same place and at the same time due to COVID. Australia didn't have any representative teams at the events. The winners were, in shooting, the juniors, Madagascar, women, Cambodia and men, France. In the triples, the juniors were France, the women were Thailand and men, France again. Dylan Rocher won the double for France as he did in 2018. Is he the best player ever? Maybe we'll find out. If you haven't yet logged into the PFA website, it's certainly worth taking the time to have a look. It is the next step in rolling out of the PFA's player and club management system. You don't have to log in to access all the information on the site, But if you do choose to use the login capabilities, you'll have access to some features not otherwise available. 
Congratulations to PFA for this website build. I found it to be extremely user-friendly, full of relevant information and an abundant resource for all things Batonk. Oh yes, and I must make mention of the listing under training videos, the one by Camberwell Batonk Club. A brilliant production with fantastic actors, shot by a one-person crew, using three cameras, a script written one hour before the shoot, and all shot in a two-hour session. Ha <laughs> ha, such talent. But seriously, this is an excellent website and well worth taking the time to browse through. You will not be disappointed. I mentioned earlier about other talents players of Batong have. While Sally Badcock from the Mission Beach Batong Club in Queensland is exactly one of those players. She has just donated her latest book to the Kossowari Coast Regional Council Library at Wongaling. I started off by asking Sal how she got involved in Patong. It would have been about 1994. We're at a garage sale and we picked up a set of those horrible plastic colourful balls because we thought, oh, that looks like an interesting thing. No, the ones you mean, yep. Yes, it was Christmas Day at a friend's place and I believe more drinks than should have been had were consumed and backyard cricket became a non-thing and so we brought out the balls and we all went, wow, this is fun. And so then we went and found some at the local sports shop and it became a regular thing. We'd go down and in their particular yard, we were just playing on grass. Oh, there was, we called the Devil's Ridge was... Um, where the uh, septic system went and the rabbit burrows and all sorts of things. But Kim and I continued playing. Excellent. And where, where was that? So was that where oh, you Oh, that was now? in Tasmania. No, oh, no, right. that was in Tassie. We were ex-Tasmanians here and then we moved up here in 2001. Then you decided, well, let's play Batonk up here and found there was nowhere to play, was there? Well, sort of. We started just playing with a couple of friends in 2012, really, after... Cycling up in 2011, there was community grant money going around for right. feel good stuff, put some nice stuff back in, in the community. And Kim happened to be talking to one of the money men and he said, Oh, what do you like doing? We need to spend some money in the area. And Kim said, Oh, well, we quite like playing Katonk. And he went, Well, we might be able to help there. And so, so lots of um, bits and bits. Oh, we had to form a club and we got our first terrain. Fantastic. Yeah, lots of work with council and on positioning and things, but yeah. we've ended up in the most drop dead gorgeous position you could ever imagine. And I suppose you look out over onto Dunk Island while you're playing, do you? Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> Tough stuff. And we've got, um, because it's on down near the beach, we have we do have um, a tree line in between us and the water. Yep. But we have magnificent trees which cover the entire piece so it's like looking up at a roof of green yeah absolutely lovely what are your piece now just straight sand or do you have gravel no gravel but it's a free form terrain so it's not level it we have a new devil's ridge and we have you know dips and things so potentially you could throw the best shot in the whole entire world but you have no idea what's going to happen when it hits the deck <laughs> It's one of the big things I enjoy about Batonk is 50% of it is luck. It is. It is. <laughs> and that's what I love too. <laughs> you and Kim started the club. That's right. Yeah. How many members would you have? We now have 41 members. That's not bad. Mission Beach is not a particularly large area, I would have thought. No. No, we don't ever have that many plays. Sure. Uh, we play twice a week. Right. Wednesdays is after work, so it's only... Oh, I see. Yep. Yeah, probably five or six of us. Yeah. Um, or, yeah, not many. Yeah. Um, and Sundays, normally you might have, I don't know, say 15 to Excellent. 20. Yeah, we, we have four games going. Oh, brilliant. The average age of the club I belong to is 70-something. Right. Well, the average age for us is about 60. Oh, that's good. And we have a slight majority of women right. um, members, over men. Do you have youth membership? We've only had the girl guides come and play a couple of times, but no, we, we don't. I, I guess the, the kids don't tend to stick around, really. Yes, I understand what you're saying. Mission Beach is very transient, so people come and go all the time. Mm. We seem to have, I guess, a, a core group of people who are here all the time. But, um, yeah, people do leave, and then 
all of a sudden you'll have someone come along to have a go and then decide that we really are a front. As a sporting group, we're probably not very sporty, but as a social group, we're very, we're very social. Yep. Now, Sal, the reason I got in touch with you was you've written a book, you've donated it to the library. Okay, so the, the book is photos of the history of our little club. I'm an artist, photographer. I've been photographing what we do what, since we started. And I've got all these photos and I thought, oh, it'd be really nice to do something with them. But we also have a lot of our members, only a couple of us, who remember from the very beginning. The rest are all new members. And a lot of these people, we were talking about things that had happened, like visits from other clubs, or and these people have no idea because they haven't been here. So I thought, well, why don't we put it together in a book? And so I've tried to do it pretty much in chronological order, um, tried to include as many photos of everyone as I possibly can. Um, I just use this to print to print it, but because I do lots of photographic stuff, yep. so I take took all their templates out and I build the pages myself yep. um, and then just drop them on. This also means, using this to print means you can do small print runs. I could have printed just one. Right. Uh, again, if someone comes along and says, oh, we'd really like a copy of this book, I can get as many or as few done as, as we need. And how long did that take? <laughs> How long did it take? Oh my goodness me, I wouldn't even like to think on hours. Um, a long time. Yep. Because you know you've got the photos floating around and, and I've tried to sort of keep them in some order, but to put things in chronological order and make sure you try and get as many examples um, of, from, say, from that year or that time, it took a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't even, oh, I couldn't guess. <laughs> Days, weeks. Yes. <laughs> and then you've got to edit the photos. Yep. And then you've got a heap of photos and you can't fit them all on. So then you've got to select which ones and which fit together. And um, That'd be the hard part. You know that you can't put them all in. But I want that one. Yes. <laughs> so I did a few random pages which have just got a heap of photos from celebrations or you know, Christmas events or whatever. And I put as many of those as we can. Yes. So it's all together and you decided that one of the local libraries would be a lot better off if they had this with them? Yes. Which library was that? Uh, Mission Beach Library. We just popped in. One of the librarians was there, so she was sending it up to Innisfar, which is, um, I'm guessing, the main library. Like Mission Beach Library is um, quite small, yep. but it will come back here. The Beach is now a, a well-known place because it's in the market park. Because we've got lots of rocks and we've got seating and we've got a shelter, people use it all the time. It's there for everyone to use. We just thought it'd be really nice to have the history somewhere. Fantastic. Now, I think you've done an excellent job in putting that together. It's a great idea. Just coming back to that, you said some of the photographs there of some competitions you've played with or people that come up and played. We have been to on road trips to Port Douglas and played up there oh, um, right. a couple of times. Yep. We try very hard to do some sort of fundraiser mm-hmm. once, once a year, so at some point you know, I might contact you and with information about a couple of the ones we've done. Only too happy to be involved and assist anywhere we can with that sort of thing. We raised money for Beyond Blue and we challenged the, the boys in Blue to our local members of the constabulary and they were so much fun. We had our own special police force and everything and find them and we, we are a very silly club. <laughs> I love the sound of that. Our, our club motto is if it's not fun, we're not doing it. Love it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sal. You take care and I look forward to talking to you again and good luck to you and the club and have a great festive season. Absolutely, and you too. Thanks, Sal. And like the Mission Beach Patonk Club, if you have something you would like Patonk Points podcast to promote, such as an event or a fundraiser, send the details to audiorexy at gmail.com. That's audiorexy at gmail.com. Now, that travelling encyclopedia of history, detail and trivia of Patonk, here's Jerry with a few words on some great players. Now, Jerry, what's happening in your trivia corner this month? I thought I'd take a look at some of the um, prominent players. I picked a name, somebody that probably everybody knows, Ixtiar Fedinor. And the question I asked myself, well, you know, it's a question that a lot of people ask themselves. It's, you know, who's the best player or who's the best ever player? 
And of course, there's no correct answer to that, obviously. There are a lot of uh, elite players who play today and who've played in the past. Uh, I would imagine that would create conflict because there are so many out there with all sorts of different records. At the end of the day, it's purely subjective. And I'm not saying that I think uh, Kishoff, as you know, was the best player, but he was certainly a very impressive player, uh, and he still is. He now plays in the veteran category of players. To be honest, I'm not sure what age you have to be to be veteran. It's probably over 60. I, I picked him. He was four times, four times world champion and 15 times champion of France. That's pretty spectacular. Yeah, that's along with that, there's countless, you know, smaller titles that all these players have won. I'm just really looking at the world championships and the national championships, uh, European champions. Sure. One interesting thing was uh, one of his feats was in 1995 uh, at Neil, he set the speed vision shooting championship, if you like. Right. It started there at Neil. I'm not sure actually what year it started in, but in any case, 1995. He shot 992 bull out of a thousand in 55 minutes and 11 seconds. My goodness, I couldn't lift that many. Uh, that's right. I mean, it makes you wonder that he, he must have had a very sore arm. I would think, uh, or a somewhat sore arm at the end. How did he do it? The first thing to note is okay. The, the bull are placed at eight meters. He's in a circle. Uh-huh. The bull are, are, are placed at eight meters in a in a roughly in a semicircle. Right. So it's a, and I think there's about eight of them are, are placed at a time. He starts shooting from the left, and as he moves to the right, there are people. There are uh, bull catchers deployed just beyond, and and the, so they rush to recuperate the bull that he's shot and, and the target that he's displayed. Good grief. They're, they're all brought back to him by the time he did his first run. It's a team, obviously a team effort. There's a lot of a lot of people involved in, in something yep. like that. The important thing is, you know, it's eight, eight meters. You know, obviously the, the the middle distance. But I guess when you see people shooting in, in an ordinary game, especially to players who, who play in the middle, so they're going from pointing to shooting. Yep. Distances are changing. That's a bit harder when you're doing everything at eight meters. You're only shooting. You, you kind of get into a rhythm. Well, I'm with you. Yep. And that's how he does it. I mean, I'm not saying that to make light of it, but you know, if you watch any players, whether it's Gila or she, Nassau for you, in a game, they'll miss every now and then. It's just a combination of you know the distance changing, the nerve, and moving from pointing to shooting in some cases. Yep. All those things sort of disrupt your, your natural rhythm. Absolutely. That's an incredible record. Yeah, 992 bull out of 1,000 in just five minutes and 11 seconds. And I wanted to say that since 1997, this event has taken on a life of its own. But since 1997, the 1,000 bulls in the now rapid shooting event has become a team event where you, you have 10 shooters rather than just one. And so each shooter is responsible for 100 bulls. Obviously, it's easier on the players. It's still interesting to watch. I saw one of those that was held in Bruce. I can't remember when that was. It might have been 2011. But you had Dila Roche, you had Philippe Cissot, you had Michel Loire, Philippe Cassé. I don't think the Marcel for you was in, in on that one. But the Marcel, he's obviously another very well-known player. He, he actually... Uh, has a, something interesting in the precision shooting arena. Yep. Nassau Fuyol holds the record for the most number of bull shot in an hour. So that's not a thousand bull in an hour, it's the most. Okay, whereas uh, Kristoff has been also, he, he took less than an hour, he did it in 55 minutes, 11 seconds. Right. Thousand Nassau Fuyol, he did 1,740 shots. He did 1,486 hits, of which 549 were cavil. That's more Caro than I'd get in two lifetimes, in three lifetimes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. It, it kind of shows what these guys are, you know. Um, Absolutely. Interestingly, some of these more recent names you've just mentioned there, Jerry, but like Cindy and Dylan Rocher, they're left-handed. Uh, yes, they are. I think the vast majority of players, and whether they're shooters or pointers, I think the vast majority are, are still right-handed. Yep. But, yeah, you pick on two there, uh, Cindy Thierot and Dila uh, Roche, very much in the limelight these days. Yep. And, yes, they, they, they both happen to be left-handed. So there's hope for me yet. 
don't think it makes any difference whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Jerry, give me something to grab on to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to say, just in regard to Dilo Hoshi, you know, that what, one thing that uh, about all of these players is that they had parents who were pretend players. In most cases, their parents had won some fairly serious uh, tournaments and they may have been world champions in their own right. Yep. Um, you know, so Dilo Hoshi, his father was, I think he was world champion at one stage. Um, and this is why they will have started virtually just as they got out of the cradle, I guess. I can't remember when Dilo started. He's got two brothers, uh, Given and Mendy. Oh, yeah. Um, and... They're both very good Pitonk players. He then was champion of France in 2005 in the 10, 11, and 12 year, year old category. And Mendy was two times champion of France in the 13, 14, and 15 year old category and also in the 16 and 17 year old category. It certainly runs in the family. It very much does. I, I suppose you'd say uh, Marco for you is, is, is a bit, amongst those that we've spoken about, he's a bit unique in as far as I know. He's the only Piton player to have made a professional career out of Piton. I think all other players can hold down the nine to five job. Oh, is that right? Yes. That's all for you. I think for the last 30 or 40 years has, has been living off, to, um, off uh, from Piton. But I mean, he's, you know, he's got uh, Piton training school and there's a lot of uh, ancillary stuff. Uh, that he does. That surprises me because I thought all these guys were full-time players. Yes, you think so. But I mean, uh, so as you know that we were talking about earlier, throughout his life, he was an electrician. Dila Rocher, as far as I know, he's, uh, he worked in the town hall in the village or the town where he lived. Uh, Michel Loire, I think he had his own business. Uh, I, I'm not sure about Diego Ritchie and uh, Cindy Ferro, but uh, I think they both work as well. They're even more impressed with them now, so that means they've got to practice in their own time. That puts them in the same category as all of us, so we can all get as good as them if we just practice a bit more. Uh, yeah, that's, that's right. So it would be nice to, to be able to wind the clock back and start <laughs> practicing at age five. It would be nice to wind the clock back to do lots of things. Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Greg. Yeah. That's very good, Jerry. Thank you very much once again. Always learn so much from you, Jerry. So does our listeners. Oh, you too, too kind, Greg. Thank you very much. All right. You take care now. And thanks again. Okay. Cheers. Thank you, Rick. Bye-bye. <laughs> One of the things I really do like about our game of Patonk is how relatively simple and straightforward it is compared to other games. Take, for example, the game of English cricket, where you have two sides, ours and theirs, one out in the field and one in. Each man that is in the side that's in goes out, and when he's out, he comes in and the next man goes in until he's out. Then when the side that has been in and are all out, the side that has been in the field goes in and the side that's in goes out and tries to get out those coming in. Sometimes you get players still in and not out. Then when both sides have been in and out, including the not outs, that's the end of the game. from Batong Points for this year. Thank you for sharing your time here. The team here wish you all the very best for the season. Look forward to a fantastic 2022. If you have anything you would like to contribute, please email audiorexy at gmail.com. That's audiorexy at gmail.com. Cheers. Rex out. You're a good man, Rex. Thanks.